Hello everyone! Welcome to the seventh installment of our Story of Skyrim Cities series. In this episode, we'll take a journey through the history of Falkreath, a place that has seen many battles over the centuries, and where many war heroes are buried. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos about Skyrim. Enjoy watching! Falkreath, also called Falkrenth or Falkreath, is one of the nine major cities in the province of Skyrim, serving as the capital of Falkreath Hold and the Boreal Forest. Its name derives from Elvish, though its meaning is unknown. The city is known as the Hero's Graveyard. Many great battles took place here for centuries, and countless warriors were buried here, leaving behind graves and monuments to them. Because of the nature of the city, the merchants of Falkreath are known to reflect the melancholic themes of death in their business. The town lies in the southwest of the province of Skyrim, near the borders of Hammerfell and Cyrodiil. At one period in history, Falkreath was part of Cyrodiil. Later, the town became a settlement in Skyrim. During the Fourth Era, when the events of the Elder Scrolls, Fadi Skyrim take place, the Jarl of Falkreath is Sidgeir, having succeeded his uncle, Dengar of Stoon. Falkreath lies in the southern forests of Skyrim, on a strategic crossroad in the middle of its respective hold, and the provincial border towards Hammerfell's wilder country, the Dragon's Teeth Mountains. It is built in the forest basin between the Geral Mountains and the highlands that contain the Shriekwind Bastion, where a small lake forms at the base, suited for a mill in this lumber town. It is a city that is heavily reliant to the lumber industry, due to the abundance of resources around them. In the Second Era, Falkreath was much larger in scope. The Jarl's Longhouse once overlooked the town from the hills in the south, while the original Hall of the Dead was kept underneath the mountains. Nowadays, the current hall was a single home for the priest, as they tended to the expansive graveyard in the city's northern section. The Jarl's Longhouse is stationed in the dead center of the city, on the main road that runs through Falkreath. The land outside of the city is largely unpopulated, but beyond the western gate, the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary was found just off the road. The Nords of Falkreath are known to master the ability to tame Sabercats, who are considered much more feral and wild, than the Senshacat Falkreath is neighbored by several settlements, including Newgrad Watch to the northeast, Northkeep to the far north, and Hammerfell to the west towards Elinhir. The city loans its name from the Elvish language, but whatever connection the Snow Elves had to the area in ancient times is unknown. The earliest allusions to Falkreath come from two poetic works of the First Era, the Adabale, attributed to Morihaus, and the Song of Pelennil, written by various unknown authors. The former work mentions a tribe called the Men of Kriath, who were imported from the north as slaves to the Aelids. According to the latter work, Pelennil Whitestrake achieved the liberation and empowerment of the Men of Kreath after orchestrating a massacre of elves in the northern holdings presumably southern Skyrim and northern Cyrodiil. As they are not described as being Nords, the men of Kreath seem to have been a distinct group of humans that were indigenous to the region. Falkreath was founded by ancient Nord warrior Bjarfrud Skjorlmor, who drove out beastly woodland inhabitants and cut down the great forest to build the settlement. Many battles occurred near Falkreath for countless centuries, and many graves and monuments were built to commemorate the fallen. The town essentially grew around its cemeteries. According to the poetic Edda, Falkreath was one of the places that submitted to Olaf One Eye as High King of Skyrim. A statue once stood commemorating the spot where Kyurik the White fell in battle defending Falkreath from the First Empire. Local legend has it that his son, Hog Merkiller, fell in exactly the same spot when he retook Falkreath years later. However, he was known to have actually fallen in the Battle of Glenumbra Moors. Later in the First Era, the Nedic King Kestik may have held sway over the Falkreath area, as evidenced by his epithet, the Forest King. He was the last to hold this title, as the Nedic civilization of the Deathlands fell with the arrival of the Ra Gada in First Era 808. Falkreath's history is intertwined with that of Colovia, as control of Falkreath often shifted between the Colovian estates and the holds of Skyrim. The earliest account of this was during an interregnum between the First and Second Empires, when the Colovian nations had split apart from each other and their leaders became thief barons and petty kings. That was until the arrival of Remenon and the formation of his empire, although Falkreath's role during this time is unknown. 
With the death of High King Logrolf in Second Era, 431, Skyrim split into eastern and western parts. The western kingdom, which included Falkreath, followed High King Svartar, who ruled from solitude. The Skjordalmor clan, descended from Bjarfrud Skjordalmor, ruled as Jarls of Falkreath during the Interregnum, and were aligned with the western kingdom. In the latter years of the Interregnum, Falkreath was once again part of the Kolovian estates, who were also split into petty kings and warlords, while the divided kingdoms of Skyrim had dissolved. King Kulakain of Falkreath sought to unify the estates, but in order to move forward, he needed to secure his northern border towards the Reach. His prized general, Hjalti Earlybeard, led his forces at the Battle of Old Hroldan, but as the siege proved that breaking the walls was impossible, the next morning he used his Thuam to obliterate it and win the battle. With this newfound power, King Kulakain unified the west and conquered the east, preparing to proclaim himself emperor. But he was later assassinated, and Hjalti, now known as Tiber Septim, was named the emperor. What followed was the Tiber War. During the imperial simulacrum in the late Third Era, the city-state of Falkreath was an active settlement. It was ruled by King Bjeld, and it had a rivalry with Whiterun. When the Oblivion Crisis broke out in Three and Era 433, Skyrim was under siege and faced severe casualties, where it was said everything between Falkreath and Windhelm was laid waste by the Daedric Hordes. Dengir of Stoon served as the Jarl of Falkreath in the years that preceded the Skyrim Civil War. He was encouraged by many people to step down as the Jarl when he supported the rebellious Stormcloaks, as opposed to the Third Empire. The position of leader of Falkreath was then given to his nephew, Sidgeir, who was known to be arrogant yet loyal to the Empire, although it was his steward Nenya that fulfilled the role as leader much more than him. Legate Skulnar commanded the Imperial Legion throughout Falkreath Hold, and the stronghold of Fort Newgrad was a vital position for Falkreath's allegiance in the Civil War. The city lies in a valley near the center of Falkreath Hold, in the low-lying forest area some distance west of Helgen. Like many of Skyrim's woodland settlements, Falkreath's economy is heavily reliant on the production of lumber. It is one of the smaller major cities, with no real walls surrounding it and not many buildings. The town is far more similar to a small farming village, rather than a major city. The Hammerfell border can be accessed by road a short walk west of the city. Since they were constantly living alongside the dead, the people of Falkreath gave many of their shops and other buildings names related to death. As told by the residents, Falkreath was the place of many battles in the past, being the main reason for the large graveyard. We have come to the end of the seventh episode of the Story of Skyrim Cities series. You can subscribe to my channel for more Skyrim videos and to support me. I hope you are following the series with pleasure. See you in the next episode.